1980 saw many great moments in popular culture. In this episode, we begin with events in popular culture from March of that year. We will remember an American reality show, the making of a tennis legend, new technology that helped TV reach a larger audience, tough guys, a cliffhanger, and a first for Broadway. These are just some of the moments that we will remember from the third month of the first year of the 80s decade. So thanks for joining us as we take a look back on popular culture from March 1980. On March 3rd, the American reality television show, That's Incredible, premiered on the ABC network in the US. Hosted by John Davidson, Fran Tarkington, and Kathy Lee Crosby, the show featured people performing a variety of dangerous stunts, like a man juggling knives, a man catching a bullet between his teeth, and Houdini-like escapes by a performer known as Mr. Escape. Other segments featured people with unusual talents, like the father who brought his five-year-old son, Eldrick, to show off his amazing talent at putting. That little boy is better known today by his nickname, Tiger. The show also introduced the latest advances in science and technology, such as the invention of the taser or corneal reshaping to fix problems with vision. Though highly criticized by some, the series was a huge success, running for five seasons and influencing the format of reality shows that would follow. Also on March 3rd, for the first time in his career, American tennis player John McEnroe became the top-ranked men's tennis player in the world at the age of 21. Because of his victory at the U.S. Open months before, McEnroe moved ahead of Bjorn Borg and Jimmy Connors to take the top seed. Though he had become engaged in a bitter rivalry between himself and Borg, McEnroe would continue to hold the top spot from 1981 to 1984 one of only four players to finish number one for four consecutive years. McEnroe held the number one ranking for a total of 170 weeks. On March 16th at 7 p.m., closed captioning was used for the first time on a network television program in the United States. This involved displaying the text of a show's dialogue, sometimes with interpretive information on the television screen. A decoder box called a telecaption adapter was needed to view the captions. These devices were available at Sears for $240. NBC's The Wonderful World of Disney first used the technology during a pre-recorded rebroadcast of the 1960 film Son of Flubber. ABC was next, debuting captioning with the ABC Sunday Night Movie during a showing of the 1978 film Force 10 from Navarone. PBS later featured the service on March 18th during its weekly broadcast of Masterpiece Theater. At first, these networks offered four to five hours each week of captioned programming. Arguing that the decoder equipment would soon become obsolete, CBS chose not to offer the service. On March 19th, The first Tough Guy competition was held at the Holiday Inn Ballroom in New Kensington, Pennsylvania. This was the first mixed martial arts tournament to be held in the U.S. Billed as organized, legalized street fighting where anything goes, it it was an elimination-style competition made up of 64 contestants divided into light and heavyweight fighting divisions. Bouts lasted up to three rounds of two minutes each and were judged using a 10 points must system. In each weight class, fighters were required to use open fingered padded gloves, wear Olympic style headgear, and were permitted to use any combination of boxing, wrestling, grappling, and martial arts skills and techniques. To be eligible to compete, a doctor's approval was needed. The competition lasted for three days, with the finals held nearly a month later on April 18th at the Stanley Theater in Pittsburgh. Following this event, over 100 
30 mixed martial arts fights were held throughout Pennsylvania before being banned by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission in January 1981. Two years later, in 1983, Pennsylvania became the first state in history to outlaw mixed martial arts contest, passing what became known as the Tough Guy Law. On March 21st, almost a month after Team USA's victory, the Miracle on Ice, President Jimmy Carter announced that Team USA would boycott the Summer Olympic Games that year, an event scheduled to be held in Moscow. The decision was made after the Soviet Union failed to comply with Carter's February 20th deadline to withdraw its troops from Afghanistan. Three months prior, the Soviet Army had invaded to insist the Afghan Communist government's fight against the Mujahideen Islamic rebel forces. The decision affected not only the athletes, but the profits of corporate advertisers and broadcasting companies like NBC. Reaction in the U.S. was predictably mixed. On one hand, some empathized with the athletes who had worked so hard to earn their chance to compete in the Olympics some of whom would not have that chance in the next games four years later. For others, the boycott became another symbol of the Cold War fight against the evil, oppressive, anti-democratic Soviet regime. The Soviets would later boycott the 1984 Olympic Games held in Los Angeles in retaliation for Carter's decision. Also on March 21st, the U.S. television show Dallas ended the final episode of its third season with a spectacular cliffhanger ending that left viewers around the world anxiously waiting for the next season to begin, desperate to find out what happened to one of its main characters. The episode set a precedent for cliffhanger endings that later TV series would follow. In the closing minutes of the episode, entitled A House Divided, after various other characters had individually vowed to stop him, J.R. Ewing, played by Larry Hagman, was shot, falling to the floor, appearing lifeless as the final credits appear on the screen. For the next eight months, viewers debated the question of who shot J.R., some even betting on the identity of the assailant. They would have to wait until November 21st for the next season to begin in order to finally have their questions answered. On March 30th, Children of a Lesser God began a successful run on Broadway. The play centers on the conflicted romantic relationship between a deaf student and her former teacher. Children of a Lesser God was the first major theatrical production to feature a deaf actor, Phyllis Freelich, in the leading role as Sarah Norman, the student. It won the 1980 Tony Award for Best Play. That wraps up our look at some of the major events in popular culture from 1980. We will continue in our next episode with April of that year, recalling more events from popular history. For now, thank you for watching and joining us in this stroll through our memories of the year that was 1980.